Good morning, good afternoon, and thanks for everybody dialing in today. Uh, I'm Major Brian Wolf uh, with the Air Force. I'm the lead engineer uh, for our, the Air Force Weather's cloud migration team. So first, I want to thank you for, uh, for joining today. Uh, today, my focus is going to be talking about migrating the Air Force's largest data center to cloud computing and to DevSecOps. So let's get started. Uh, where I want to start is a little bit of a, the introduction to who I am and then the, uh, the task, the project. And then we'll go into what we did in kind of preparing for the journey. Then we'll walk through actually beginning the journey and putting everything in place as we started the execution and implementation. And in that segment, we'll talk about some of the challenges, roadblocks, uh, and the necessary things that we had in place and uh, allowed us to continue to move. And then we'll talk about what's next from where we're at now. And we'll we'll roll up all of this into the conclusion as uh, some of the, the lessons learned that we had in our journey. So who am I? Uh, I'm Major Brian Wolf. I'm a software engineer. I've been in the Air Force for 23 years, uh, and it's been an incredible opportunity along the way. I am a husband and a father of seven kids. Uh, we have a pretty adventurous life, uh, and so it's been been great throughout that uh, that time. I am the lead engineer, like I mentioned, over there for the cloud migration team uh, here in uh, Boston area, Massachusetts. So what's the scope of this project that, that we have? So we're, we're migrating the Air Force's largest special purpose processing node. If you can consider what weather is, you have a lot of data, a lot of sensors that are out there that are need some very complex processing to be able to bring the, the data that's observed and make it usable. So we leverage a lot of high performance computing uh, and that uh, distributed computing uh, across the, the globe we have thousands of daily active users. We carry in or ingest 80 terabytes of data a day and process it as well. And we're taking this whole thing, our applications, our infrastructure, and we're migrating it to cloud computing. Along the way, we're doing digital transformation and incorporating uh, DevSecOps. Our organization has been practicing agile DevOps for uh, close to, to eight years now. And uh, we're just doing a, an iteration on that seemingly, but it is a drastic culture change doing it. So where did we start with this whole thing? Well, we had to look into our portfolio and find a good step to get some lessons learned on starting our journey. And so we had to go to the left of that start. And looking at our portfolio, we, we wanted to find an application that was going to be low risk, that we can get our, our toes in the water and, and understand what we needed to do and try, kind of drive those initial lessons learned. So in that uh, exploratory effort, if you will, we found an application that was pretty stovepiped. It, there was no risk to operations or low risk to operations. Uh, it didn't have any live data that was attribute, attributed to it. And so it was the perfect application for us to be able to, to leverage there. There are many different approaches to migrating applications. Uh, one is lift and shift or rehosting. Another is refactoring, changing something to be cloud native or performant in the cloud. And then another is re-envisioning, taking some of the, the impact and the requirements for the application and then just redoing it. Uh, we chose with this one to do a simple approach and just do a lift and shift. And so that, that made it easy enough for us to get it in the cloud. Uh, and so some of the outcome of that journey, uh, we tied into to lessons learned for the greater enterprise. But why were we even looking at migrating? So we some of the things that fell into that, we had some DOD mandates for consolidating data centers. But with that mandate, we actually had the opportunity to look at our uh, look at performance, look at security, and look at our current data center, and, and ask: 
can we do something better? And so that's why we looked at uh, different needs here. We needed to modernize. We Maintaining data centers is difficult in general, especially the size data center that we had. Uh, risk reduction is a, a very big one uh, if we can offload some of that infrastructure into the cloud. And then in in the migration, it allowed us to, to look at how can we develop capabilities faster with better performance and security. So it started with a small team and we had a champion, which our champion was our, our, uh, our branch chief. And this was a critical person to have on our team. He was the one who actually saw the need to do this. Uh, and provided the top cover, organized the, the team, and cast the vision for us to, to start running. So our team started with him, and it uh, also included our chief architect working with our designers to build our reference architecture. We had a program manager, an engineer, myself, and one security personnel. And so uh, this, is, this is where our journey started. So what we found at the very beginning, we had a lot of on-prem understanding. We had a lot of tech technological understanding on our applications and IT stack, but migrating to the cloud was, was a new thing. There are some understanding from a technical IT uh, understanding that we, we had, sure, <clears throat> that was common to both on-prem and cloud, but there was a lot of cloud knowledge that none of us had. And so training was a big part of this. And specifically to, to target the training, certifications were, uh, were a good path. And so we looked at pra uh, practitioners' certifications just to get a high-level executive understanding of different tools and cloud. And then we looked into things like DevOps certifications and solutions architect certifications for us to really get down deep into the tools and understand what they are and how to, to operate them and then how to, to integrate them. Finally, and one thing that I feel for, for our office and our stakeholders, which was most important, was something called the Journey to Cloud Simulation. We actually sent 30 plus of our program management staff and stakeholders out to Seattle and sat down for uh, for two days to go over tools and cloud-based understanding and knowledge and go through this simulation. And what it allowed us to do was two things. One, we were already past a certain point in our journey. Uh, and so there were some, some decisions that we had to make along the way on planning and building a schedule and building an implement implementation plan. And so the Journey to Cloud Simulation validated a lot of those initial decisions that we had to make, which was fantastic. And it wasn't just validation for us internally as a team, but it was validation to, uh, to our stakeholders that the decisions that we made in the process and the decisions that we made uh, were good. And so it built a lot of credibility and trust in our program management team. Another thing that we learned here is the top cover was critical. I mentioned our champion. Uh, his position was uh, was vital to our success. So he handled stakeholder leadership engagement at the highest levels, which allowed us to secure funding for the whole project. And then along the way, uh, that engagement, that communication, um, bringing the schedule and the priority, that was that was something that was a must to continue on with the success. So on to execution and implementation. We've been doing this since the end of 2018, uh, from just fielding that first application to where we're at now. And there were some challenges along the way. One of the biggest challenges that we saw was comparing the architecture design and then implementation. Communication was a, a big thing in here because there was a shared vision between the design team and the implementation team that wasn't there, wasn't in place. Uh, whether it was going to be due to 
the education, whether it's going to be due to the drive to build first. Uh, there are a lot of a lot of uh, things that we can look back and, and claim hindsight. However, having a common internalized understanding of the architecture and the vision uh, is one thing that was something that we ran into as a roadblock and I think a lesson learned for us. Processes and a plan being in place at the very beginning or having that be the first thing that you, that we built, we didn't do that. We ran into understanding there was a need for in-house processes along the way versus recognizing we needed to start with processes. One of the other things that we understood and we ran into was we needed to hire the right people with the right experience and skills. Uh, we wanted to build like industry so that we could move fast. And so we hired industry experts. But what we quickly realized was because we didn't have certain onboarding processes uh, and we didn't have a shared vision and schedule uh, that we were working on, uh, we had a lot of delays in bringing the right people on or the people with the right skills were skilled in one thing, but they weren't skilled in multiple things, uh, which caused uh, the delays. So all through this, we had to keep asking the question, how is industry doing this and we can't? And so those lessons learned were a big thing that, uh, or those challenges were a big thing that we ran into. Another thing that we kind of learned and ran into along the way was governance policy and alignment to that. We, in our journey, were building something for the Air Force Weather Enterprise that as a platform, uh, other organizations were building for the whole Air Force. And so Cloud One, Platform One, these were entities and organizations that were building uh, capabilities for the whole Air Force. And as we built, uh, we were building alongside them, uh, not in, in lockstep with them or in the same communication channels as them, but we uh, we built in parallel. So there was many times where we had to re-engage with them and, and check, what are you building? How are you building? Uh, and uh, we, our time timelines just never truly aligned. Um, we also built to, of course, uh, at the same time that we were building DOD mandates or DOD uh, memorandums were coming out on reference architectures. And so at the beginning, we leveraged people that were already out and doing. Uh, and so we le leveraged lessons learned, playbooks, and different things in the build out. Uh, and as the DOD, the Air Force First, and the DOD pushed out uh, different messaging and reference architectures, we made sure if we weren't in full alignment, we aligned to that. Along the way, of course, over the last three years, we also had team growth. And I think this is one of the most powerful things is we... At first, we had our small team of our small band of seven. But as we uh, built our capabilities and built our plan and such, uh, we saw the need to build to something that was very organized and structured. And so uh, we, we had a briefing from a team that provided a cloud center of excellence model. And so we started building to that model. And so we filled our engineering roles first because that was most of the activity. Uh, we were uh, in those lead positions, multiple hats between engineering and governance. Uh, and as we grew, we filled the gaps and reduced overtasking those lead positions. So between then having a team of seven to now, we have a team of teams with over 50 between our leads, uh, our contractors, our subcontractors, and everybody else in between. So what do we do with the journey forward? Well, right now, uh, we're looking at operations and support. Uh, so our platform isn't fully baked. We're still developing, obviously. But on the process side and on the business side, we're building. So we're looking at documenting processes and playbooks. And this is across the board. This is in operations, in uh, program management, in security, and so those, the documenting, the processes and the playbooks, so again, are across the board. One thing that we built to support operations is a help desk. We label it the support service center because it covers onboarding, help desk, offboarding, training, and a few others. 
And so these are some of the things that we continue to, to build out uh, for our mature system. Another thing that we have to look at, it makes sense as you're migrating a data center to, uh, to look at the plan for decommissioning the data center and those activities. But what happens whenever you have applications that are now fielded in the cloud that also have to decommission whenever they uh, they reach the end of their life cycle. And so we're, even though infrequent, we're running into situations where we might have to actually develop a plan for fielded cloud-based applications that are going to no longer be running. And so we're working policies and procedures for those as well. And then finally, we're looking at a, the proper balance between dev and ops. We've been doing DevOps and Agile development since 2013 as an organization. But in this new construct, uh, we've understood the, the ownership and the operations of the dev and test stack versus the operation uh, or the production stack. And so in the cloud, because some of those capabilities um, kind of blend, we're trying to understand where does the line actually end for dev and start for ops and where does it blend? And so that's some of the conversations that we're having right now. So in conclusion, the big rocks that we ran into as lessons learned in the migration and in our, uh, in our journey here, first, communication is paramount. Uh, communication, top cover, those things allow for one, secure funding and support and setting the user expectations. And another that is a strong lesson learned is ensuring that there's a shared vision across all parties, but especially between the design and the implementation teams. Another big rock and lesson learned is to build an architecture and a plan first. Be flexible whenever you run into challenges, uh, but also honor that plan. With challenges, expect challenges and face failures head on. Uh, there's going to be building a process, which is great, but also understand that um, those, those processes might not be refined on first iteration. So build processes first before you start building your actual dev stack. Understand there's going to be scheduled delays. Uh, there's always going to be scheduled delays. But be able to understand uh, and support and accept those de delays. Finally, one thing that we ran into is the tool determination and changes. This goes a little bit to process and a little bit to implementation. For the, the process, we didn't have a process for bringing in new tools. And so... In order for us to maintain security and uh, go with the architecture and maintain the concepts of our architecture, if we wanted to bring in a new tool, there was no process for validating that tool, for understanding the security implications of that tool, where it fits in the, pi in the, the overall stack and the architecture. There was no process that was shared uh, between all the stakeholders in that in that uh, the development side for us to bring in those new tools. So that was one of the things that we, we faced at the very beginning. And the reason for facing that challenge was understanding that sometimes the design, the tools that were in the reference architecture that we designed, uh, they might've been industry uh, tools that met all the constraints that we wanted but sometimes they didn't talk well with another industry tool that we had selected as well. And so there were times where we had to look at new tools that were a better fit uh, for our architecture and integrated better. One of the last things that we ran into is understanding scope creep. This was a little bit of the tools exploration. We went through about a three month to, to six month period where we explored a lot of different tool sets. And as we went into conversations and uh, development demos and different things like that, it kind of caused a little bit of rabbit hole uh, tangents that we probably could have avoided 
if we stuck to our original plan and original design. So finally, uh, one of the things that we really enjoyed uh, and that I would recommend to any team is be innovative, discover and explore, but also know when to streamline and say no. So with that, uh, that's the close of this, uh, this presentation. So I invite any questions. And I, of course, thank you for your time.